Namaste. I'm Red Feather Free. Thank you for tuning in. This is part two of Tiamat, the introductory to Chasing the Dragon. I left off on the description of Tiamat and telling you that she represented an aspect of the Jungian subconscious, the void, as the original chaos that everything else comes out of. And this could also be thought of in the Gnostic sense of the deity, Abraxas, or if you want to look at it in modern quantum physics terms, she's the field of force that all things manifest out of. Continuing though, Tiamat has also been claimed to be a cognate with the Northwest Semitic Tehom, the deep or the abyss talked about in the book of Genesis 1 chapter 2. See, the language of the Pentateuch and its relation written by A. Yehuda, published in Oxford 1933. This is crucial because it represents the abyss, the bottom. And as I said in the part one, I see her as representing a real thing. The ancients understood the history or the evolution of the cosmos and the earth, if you will. And she represents multifaceted separation of evolution, the fractal, she's the, the cosmic chaos above, but she's also the terrestrial chaos below that gives birth to us. So in the terrestrial sense, Tiamat is the mid-Atlantic ridge, or more generally what are known as seafloor spreading centers and or continental rifting locations. This is anywhere where new crust is being extruded from deep within the mantle. These for seafloor spreading, the Wikipedia page says, is a process that occurs at mid-ocean ridges where new oceanic crust is formed through volcanic activity and gradually moves away from the ridge. Spreading helps explain continental drift in the theory of plate tectonics. Now, I suggest that Tiamat is also responsible for continental rifting and the formation of things like Lake Baikal and the splitting of Africa and Saudi Arabia. Look it up. You can look at all these things on Google Earth. Follow her around. Follow the great dragon around and you'll see her. She ensnares the Earth. Continental rifting is said to be the process by which the continental lithosphere stretches. A continental rift is the belt or zone of the continental lithosphere where the extensional deformation rifting is occurring. These zones have important consequences and geo geologic features and if the rifting is successful lead to formation of new ocean basins. So, my battery is getting very low. I've got about nine minutes left to record, but I'm going to finish recording this for you right now. And this is also connected to a process known as serpentinization. So, Tiamat is said to known, be known to have given birth to sea serpents or dragons. This is literally a reference to the process of serpentinization, which OceanExplorer.noah tells us is occurring at the Lost City Atlantis Massive. And the chemistry of the vent fluids and the fluid circulation at Lost City are not driven by interaction of seawater with hot lava or cooling of magma at depth. Instead, hydrothermal activity at the Lost City is driven by chemical reactions between seawater and mantle rocks that make up the underlying basement. This is unlike almost all other known hot spring systems on the seafloor. That is false. In fact, it is ubiquitous around the seafloor when you start looking for it. When I get to part two, we're going to be going in to Mew and James Churchward's Continent in the Pacific, as well as Atlantis. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Red Feather Free, talking about Tiamat, the Abyss, the Mid-Atlantic Atlantic Ridge, Serpentinization, Continental Rifting, Seafloor Spreading, trying to spread the Gnosis. Bless you. Please share this. Thank you.